good friend and tested me in nukes on my boards. Uh, President of the American Board of uh, Radiology will now present the ABR report. Thank you, Mickey. Thank you, Bill. Uh, the ABR has uh, a lot on its plate, and we've accomplished a lot of things in the last few years. But I believe the two things that I want to tell you about uh, have to do with um, maintenance of certification, which is something we talked about last year when we had some productive uh, conversations within the council. Uh, and uh, to, to inform you of, of, of what we're, we're doing for uh, parts three and, and part uh, four. I have no disclosures. Uh, it, it's often said that the, uh, the future has a way of appearing unannounced. Uh, for changes in healthcare in the 21st century, it came very much announced in this report that you're all familiar with, which describes the great gap between the health care that we provide and the health care that we could provide. And in case you missed the subtitle underneath uh, there, I've made it bigger for you, a new health care system for the 21st century. This wasn't just written for our amusement. This was written to change medicine, and medicine is changing. Uh, to, to, to basically summarize this for what it has to do with the topic I'm talking about is that in the report it, it says that healthcare system fails to translate knowledge to practice, uh, that what we learn doesn't get to our patients, that physician competency is not consistently or frequently assessed, and the system and physicians um, need to change. In terms of, of these, these concepts in there, they, they really were observations, but they morphed very quickly into criticisms, into expectations, and ultimately for the ABMS and ABR into competencies and the requirements for us as radiologists to demonstrate to the public that we did have those competencies. Uh, in, 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 into this very familiar four, part, four parts of, of maintenance of certification. Uh, one of the problems with dividing this up is what we've lost in terms of our diplomates who are, who are participating in this is the sense of satisfaction of why am I doing this. It's a checklist of four things. I check them off. I've done them. I'm done. And w one of the things the ABR is trying to get back to is the original idea of the ABMS of how MOC should be one coherent process. That is parts two and three, self-assessment, CME, and external assessment should really f give feedback into gaps in knowledge to us as physicians, that that should lead to professional development, a change in our behavior, our way of thinking, uh, and, and ultimately into a change of practice and practice improvement for our patients. And this would satisfy IOM's dictum that knowledge needs to be arrive in our practices. So I'm going to talk about two parts of, of the program, part three, assessment of knowledge, judgment, and skill, uh, known as the examination, uh, and improvement in, in medical practice, what we call PQI. Uh, this group, this group of, of our, uh, both our trustees and our governors, uh, are really committed to, to making uh, uh, meaningful MOC improvements that bolster not only a sense of satisfaction and accomplishment to you, but, but also can be reasonable and accomplished in a way that isn't an unnecessary burden. Uh, the changes in part four began last year, and we discussed those in, the, in our council meeting last year, uh, but we had begun them be before that. Uh, and as you remember, uh, when we started uh, MOC, um, that part four could really only be completed one way, and that is by using the quality improvement cycle. Um, uh, basically, it's the scientific method. We thought this was understandable. It would work. It's excellent because it not only generates information of how we're changing things, but whether we're successful in it. The problem is this was one of the most confounding parts of the program and people were really reluctant or, or didn't understand exactly how to apply it and this was particularly true of small practices. So, so to, to give more options, it was decided that for its diplomates, the ABR would recognize another category for people who couldn't do this or didn't do this to satisfy that requirement. Uh, so practice quality improvement projects are still the gold standard 
That's one way. But the second way is uh, participatory quality improvement activities. Uh, and this would require active participation of the individual. It, you wouldn't get credit because somebody else in your department was doing it. And the definition that we've devised is these activities are those in which a diplomate is engaged, either as a volunteer or during your work, work day, uh, that may reasonably be expected to contribute directly uh, to or increase the likelihood of advancement or improvement of quality and or safety in healthcare at the local or national level. And we know there are plenty of opportunities out there now for us to participate in the, these. And if we take a leadership role or a primary role at our institutions, why should we not get credit for that? Because it does show our commitment to quality improvement. We have these on our website, and I won't go through them all individually. There are 16, but this was meant to be a living document. That is, if there are new ones that appear, uh, new in national in initiatives, or ones that, that you feel that we've left off the list, please let us know, because we are open to making this a, a living document. The key here really is active participation. Uh, a local or national leadership role in a national quality improvement program, such as Image Gently, Image Wisely, or Choosing Wisely, uh, clinical quality safety review committee participation, uh, peer review or OPPE participation, uh, root cause analysis teams, and reporting to a national registry, and this is certainly where MOC interfaces with the ACR because of the registries it provides for benchmarking it also includes some of these, attending 10 or more patient safety conferences a year, safety quality improvement programs, a scorecard or, or huddle, uh, peer and patient evaluation and satisfaction surveys, national accreditation programs, uh, and MQSA, as well as NCI cooperative group clinical trial. Again, the key is active participation. The advantages to th this second option uh, include that we can do these within uh, the expected workflow day. You don't have to, you don't have to make a, sp a separate effort. Uh, reflect that they reflect the uh, values uh, and, and of, of our community. They demonstrate an active personal investment in quality improvement efforts. Uh, and they provoke, provoke, uh, promote the national quality and safety standards that underlie some of these. And they're understandable and professionally satisfying because many, many of our colleagues volunteer to do these. Uh, and they often uh, involve quality team committee work, and uh, our committee work. This is a very underappreciated part of this. And if you were here earlier for the keynote speaker, uh, where he differentiated between the technology and the personal side of medicine, uh, as we look at the way our practices have changed from being consultative, where the teams came by every morning and went over the studies and took that to the immediately to the bedside or came from the bedside to you to find out what they should order, that that we're more in isolation than ever, that we, in many cases, we're sitting in rooms reading uh, studies of patients we've never seen and sending these reports to doctors we've never met or haven't seen in a while because they don't come by anymore. This is one of the things that makes us in danger of being a commodity. These participatory PQI activities are the one aspect of MOC that require or encourage radiologists to leave these reading rooms and personally interact in a meaningful way with other physician specialists, our referring physicians, fellow radiologists, or other significant components of the healthcare system. And these are particularly useful when they involve multi-specialty or multi-department projects. This is one way that we as persons, as radiologists, not radiology, can increase the appearance uh, and the recognition of the value that we provide, that we add to the studies that we do. Um, I want to move on to part three, and this is uh, an issue that we've, uh, we've grasped uh, to, to change uh, at the end of last year and recently made some, some changes. Uh, as you know, part three is ass the assessment, the examination. Uh, the current rule is that uh, requirement is a 10-year uh, traditional secure proctored examination at a test center. Does this really address what the IOM wants us 
wants us to do and, and the way it wants us to present you as radiologists. Uh, that is, uh, I mean, are we, are we really evaluating ourselves as frequently as possible? 10 years may not be much better than once in a lifetime. Uh, translating knowledge into practice is not apparent. There are ways to do this assessment that satisfy that requirement. Uh, the goals for improvement, ABR formed a task force uh, that looked into all of the options and came up with goals for us to meet and any changes we would make. The first was to minimize travel expense and time away from work and family by bringing the assessment to the diplomat devise a more continuous process of assessment, which is what IOM really was interested in, with more frequent and immediate feedback regarding gaps in diplomat knowledge, not every 10 years, and provide an opportunity for remediation and improvement by providing more feedback. To promote a prime goal of MOC, uh, that is ongoing professional development by turning an exam into both an assessment and a learning opportunity and to incorporate modern adult learning models. We've been doing the same secure examinations since we were founded uh, in 1934. So it probably is time for a change. Uh, in May of this year, the, uh, just actually a, a week and a half ago, uh, the Board of Governors uh, met in Dallas and adopted a new part three online assessment model to address these improvement goals. Uh, we call it, and it's a mouthful, this is just the working name, Online Longitudinal or Continuous Assessment. Uh, it will replace the existing traditional secure MOC examination. Uh, the initial certification examinations, uh, the ones you take during and after uh, residency, will remain in their, in, in their present forms, both the core and certifying exams. So, what I'm telling you only applies to MOC examinations. The fundamentals of this program are that the diplomates create a profile of the subspecialty areas that most closely fit what we do in practice, and that's what you can do now in a modular form uh, for the secure exam, so we're not, we're not changing that. Uh, you would get a weekly email with a link uh, to questions relevant to this profile. The questions will be, can be answered singly or in small batches, just to fit with your schedule. Once a question is opened, a limited time is allowed for you to answer the question, uh, and, and you will learn immediately whether you've answered it correctly or not. After answering, you would receive the question's rationale, as well as a critique of the answers, why this was wrong and this is right, uh, and a brief uh, educational material and references. Uh, those who answer questions incorrectly uh, receive future questions on the same topic to gauge whether they have learned the material. This is actually measuring professional development and knowledge growth. Uh, the annual score de determines your, your performance in part three uh, yearly, and the questions are answered only by the diplomat based on an honor system. It's not a group effort. So basically, you're on your honor to answer these when you open them uh, without, without help. And, and the idea is if you get it wrong, we will tell you why it was wrong and give you another opportunity at some point during the year to answer that question again. So just as a mock-up here, if you, if you came on the link, this would be, say, a, a typical or a, an example of what you might see with a question, you'd have uh, and we had different times, but the average uh, would be probably a minute to, to view this and to, uh, to answer the question. In this case, it tells me that my answer, um, that the answer is B and, and that uh, I, I was not correct. And it tells me the answer and it gives me an explanation and gives me references to use uh, in, 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 in case I want to learn more uh, than, than what the initial question, the part of this topic that was addressed by the question. The advantages of, of this are that it requires no travel. Uh, there's little impact on your work day. You can do these later if you wish and in batches. You can opt out of questions that you may not apply. So for instance, if you're a neuroradiologist but you don't do head and neck and the question that pops up 
uh, or the title of the question says MRI of the head and neck, you can say, I don't want to answer this one because we will give you more questions than you have to answer during the year. So you will have some opportunities uh, to answer more questions than, than the number you need. But it's, it's the number of questions that you answer and that requirement hasn't been specifically set yet. Uh, you get immediate feedback that guides your, MS, your, your CME. Uh, it's an evidence-based model. Uh, there's potential for retesting areas of weakness. It identifies knowledge gaps among groups of radiologists. So basically, this is a form of needs assessment for, say, this organization. The ABR reports to the societies that we're, we're examining people in uh, nuclear medicine, and they don't know about a certain topic uh, or, or there is, say, a new issue with some MRI um, um, or, or radiologic um, uh, materials that, that we're injecting, that we can make, we can make the community aware of these. Uh, it's a proven platform. The American Board of Anesthesia piloted this program for two years and introduced it this year, this January, as its part three requirement. And, and the diplomates uh, love it. And having been with a group of anesthesiologists recently, their, their spouses and significant uh, others were even more happy about it. Uh, after they described what, it, what their husbands and wives and, and significant others were like in terms of studying for a secure examination. Uh, and it has ABMS support, which we certainly need to, to implement this. It's important for you to know that ABMS is organizing a similar project, uh, but ABR is developing our own platform because of our needs of large data sets for the images. Uh, the information um, in terms of development, piloting, and timelines will be different from theirs. Uh, and we will be issuing an, uh, issuing an announcement uh, with more information uh, within a week. And we, the target date is Tuesday, but it could be Wednesday of, of this week. Uh, and for further development, please consult the ABR website, not ABMS, because that is a separate project. We will never have perfect ways to assess, uh, to assess physicians. Um, and, uh, it, but it's our responsibility, and we feel that we can do this with online continuous assessment, uh, to satisfying our goals of demonstrating your competence while promoting professional development. Uh, to get back to where, where we thought that IOM and ABMS wanted us to be. Uh, that in terms of learning and applying that learning, that knowledge into, into practice. If you want to know more about this, there will be an hour-long session at noon where we'll discuss some topics uh, including implementation, uh, some exemptions, uh, and some other things that you might be interested or your colleagues might be interested in knowing. It'll be in the Maryland Suites on Tuesday. Um, uh, but the, the, the board is, is committed uh, to, to making these changes to really make MOC work. Uh, I want to thank you for my fellow board members for the feedback and support that you've given us, uh, and I want to thank you uh, for listening to what I have to say. Thank you.